If you would love to create a transformational and successful coaching business, but you don't know where to start or how to make this a full-time career, then my new certification program, Influential Coach, is for you. There is no other four-month live online mastermind like this. I'm going all in, guns blazing on this one with you to skyrocket your coaching career and personal brand online. You will learn the frameworks I personally use for rapid transformational coaching so you can support your clients to achieve their dreams no matter where they are in life. You will also learn how to authentically brand and market yourself as a coach so you can stand out from the rest and build a career of freedom and fulfillment. Spots are limited and this is an application only program. So if you're serious about finally committing to building a successful career in transformational coaching, then head over to imjoelbrown.com slash coach and apply today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast. I'm your host, Joel Brown, and I'm here today with Dr. Mary Ranzel and Ellie Hively. And Dr. Renzo is a neuroimmunologist who specializes in brain optimization. Ali is a well-being coach, an empowerment coach. And when you blend the two together, what we get here is brain ops group. This is a, a duo together with Mary and Ali. They've created a way to really bring people into a space where their mission is to equip professionals with evidence-based tools clear goals, and an action plan to allow them to manage stress, increase resilience, and optimize brain function. So if you're in a place right now, I know, you know, COVID has been happening. There's a lot of this like uncertainty in the air. There's a lot of, I need to strive hard in my business. I need to get it all now, you know, batten down the hatchets, protect and save. I know that what happens is our brain takes a hit. And what I'm really excited to dive into today is if you're struggling with this right now, Mary and Ali here are able to really speak into this and teach you some ways that you can optimize your brain and start getting on your own team to win. So Mary and Ali, welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast. I'm excited for this piece here today. Joel, thanks for having us. It's yes. so great to be here. We're honored. Yeah, you're Absolutely. welcome. It, it, was, you. so it was a bit of a mouthful. I know I know you both of you are like Swiss army knives. You've got a, a plethora <laughs> of skill sets. So I was like, I hope I got it in there and everyone can that's listening Did it. can uh, at least get a good understanding. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mouthful. So so but let's break it down. One each, because I know there's there's two of you here, and sometimes it's like I, I know I'm getting the best of both. Uh one each, what are you most fascinated about? that is in your field of work, something that you might've realized recently, maybe it's a revelation or a, a study you came across that you've been applying with your students, with your clients mm -hmm. that you're like, wow, people need to know this. What would it be? Well, I, I'll start. I love talking about studies in the brain. So, um, you know, resiliency is a term we've used a lot over the last uh, year because of COVID. So we, resiliency just means, you know, kind of getting over around or through a hurdle, a a block, a, you know, a challenge. And um, we've all done that 100%, you know, through the last year, but there are ways and there are tools that we can do each day or a couple times a week to increase our resiliency. And it matters for our, our physical health. It matters for our work outcomes. Um, it probably matters for our, our home lives. Um, you know, so it, it's really impactful and they're not, they're not going to take a lot of time, energy or money, you know, so we, that's what we try to line up for folks. Sounds good. I can't wait to get into that. Mm -hmm. Ali, what's your yeah, thoughts? Absolutely. Yeah. So I really think that it's really helping people to understand how powerful they are and how much they can change and they don't just have to go along with the way things are. And so I feel like this goes along a lot with resiliency, but also when it comes to transformation, when it comes to well-being, when it comes from even just like rising in whatever situation you're in, helping people to understand their power is so amazing and fascinating because when that light bulb goes on, like, Oh, I don't have to just live in this situation or I, I don't have to, you know, have this happen to me, then so much magic can happen from a well-being perspective, health perspective, career, lifestyle, success, all those things. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Powerful, powerful stuff. So yeah. let's hit on it. Biggest struggle that you finding right now with, uh, those that are coming to you that are working closely with you, what would be the, the real big pain point? You know, people are overwhelmed and they think they're stuck. 
they think like this is their only option or they're in a job and they think, uh, I just got to stay here. It's too risky to try something new or to really do that. Um, what word did you use? use like whispers of, of wisdom? I think Joel used that in, when you're in one of your podcasts. And I love that. It's like, you know, like your inner voice is saying, you know, you have more, there's more to you, but you think, oh, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't rock the boat. Well, I, you know, as a, a neurologist, as, as anyone that, um, you know, a coach, the brain is what we call neuroplastic. So it means it can change. And we know that because we learn things, right? Like we learn new skills. We learned how to ride a bike. We learned how to walk. We know that we see that as kids, but it goes on as adults. So we can learn new things. You're not stuck. You know, you just have to be intentional. You have to put your energy where it matters and your time where it matters, but your brain's got you, you know, it's, it's made chemically, it's made to change physically. It will change as you try new things. Um, the other thing I think is like our day-to-day actions change our perceptions. When you say like, what's a cool study that you read? Uh, people that were sleep deprived when they were in this special kind of MRI, when they looked at faces, they perceive more anger if they were sleep deprived. So when you say like people are working hard, they're working hard on their business or entrepreneurs, or maybe they're working two businesses because they're trying to start something and work another one. And they're just like, I'll sleep later. I'll sleep like next year and in five years. Um, our perception of the world is different depending on, you know, how we're supporting our brain day to day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Super That's cool. Huge. They saw anger more often, you know, and it wasn't anger. They just what they perceived, you know, That's right, which goes yeah. along so much with like the struggle of emotional processing. And this is something that we talk about when it comes to resiliency, but people are feeling so many feelings, right? They're feeling like fear, obviously they're feeling whatever they feel about the situation of the world. And of course, like COVID and all of those things. And then they also feel like grateful because maybe their situation isn't as bad as someone else's. And so they're trying to manage so many emotions from like a positive and a negative. And so I think that's another thing that really keeps people stuck and they don't know what to do with all those feelings of just like things, you know, things kind of suck, but they're not that bad, but they're like, what do you do with um, those positive and negative emotions kind of on a constant basis. Yeah. You know, we didn't really have to worry about maybe, maybe we didn't have the level or the depth or the intensity of the emotions, you know, without COVID, you know, maybe we did in yeah. some ways, but with COVID, they're all like super intense, super highs and lows. Um, so we needed some new tools, you know, and that's what, you know, it's, it's part of brain optimization. It's just to know what to do. Yeah. I, I feel like COVID uh, woke a lot of people up um, mm-hmm. and, and whether they liked it or not, some people got up and went, I'm going to make the most of this. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then some went, I don't like this. This feels uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. either way, it's not bad. It's like, cool. It's, it's woken you up in a way where it's empowered you or it's got you into a place of self-reflection and go, wait a minute, maybe I haven't got all these things together that I thought I did. Uh, you know, right. and, I, and I like, I like the fact that if we're looking at, you know, life, as an arena, as a dojo that we get to, you know, play in, essentially it's going to be an amazing catalyst for growth. If we can look at it as this here is shaping me and I get to determine how, how it shapes me. It's not going to tell me what to do. I'm the master of my mind, not the slave to it as Dr. Jody Spencer uh, says. And so Mm -hmm. I, I find what's happening with COVID is, we for sure are getting some crazy propaganda that's out there. Like we're we're getting thrown through a loop and a lot of people are confused about like, is this thing legit? Like there's, there's certain things that are presented as evidence and then there's conflicting uh, things as well. So people were just like, I don't know, like if I'm supposed to feel bad, if I'm not wearing a mask, I don't know like what I'm to say to somebody that says that they may have it and they don't, or, you know, then like some people I know their uh, family members have, passed away, not knowing if they actually did from COVID. And so they weren't even allowed, like one of my, my mentors, my friends, he wasn't even allowed to go to his mother's funeral because of COVID. And he says like, I, I don't even know if it was COVID and they're treating it as if none of us can see, you know, our, our mother. And so mm-hmm. there's some interesting things that are in the space. And obviously the political turbulence that was happening recently in America, for you guys out there, um, it, it was interesting to see, people's need to feel like they need to side on one side is like, mm-hmm. I'm either left or I'm right. And, and what I found within that experience of just like watching it as an Australian on the outskirts, seeing what's going on, I'm like, wow. But the thing is, if you, if you, if you over identify with one, what happens is you become easily controlled. Mm-hmm. So like, let's, let's go into this conversation here. How do we center ourselves after this 
chaotic storm of, of, you know, information war and confusion. It's like a ping pong battle. How do Mm -hmm. we center ourselves? Yeah, I think, you know, the first thing is there's a term called emotional processing. And in order to live life successfully, we have to know how to do it. If we don't know how to do it, that's when people do turn to, you know, addiction or turn to other things because the emotions are so, they just don't know what to do with them. I mean, there's a lot of reasons that people may have addiction. Some of it's genetic, et cetera. But, you know, healthy emotionally processing it has to be part of our daily routines. And it doesn't have to be anything really super dramatic. We just have to be able to name them. Like just say, you know what, at this point in time, I have like 15 opposing emotions, you know, today at this moment. And it's, you don't have to do anything about them. Like you said, you're the master. So you're like, I see them. I'm going to let them swim right by. I'm going to let them blow right by. I'm going to name them. And so they don't have power over you over the next, you know, 10 years, you know? So, so there's some tools that, um, I, I don't know in, in Australia, but at least in the States, the psychologists have been out kind of sharing tools to how to emotionally process, you know, regularly to try to help people through all the COVID stresses, like you said, your family and your communities, there's a lot of stresses and politically. Um, so yeah, there's ways, there's things you can do. And I think one thing like Joel, you talk about is like gratitude. You just say you, you like, you want to change things in your brain and in our brain, if we go to more positive emotions and we, and we go, we say something we're grateful for, it will turn on, you know, our prefrontal cortex, which helps us make better decisions and be able to like think at higher levels rather than just be afraid or, and get stuck. Um, so if we want, if we, if we were starting a business or you're trying to be, uh, you know, work hard in the office, you try to go to positive emotions as best as you can, because you're, you turn on the part of the brain that's, that can think more deeply and take in facts and make healthy, you know, make uh, more, um, you know, intelligent decisions. So that's one thing you could do. It's easy, right? So you just have to list your emotions and then, you know, go to gratitude because yeah. that's the easy one. You know, they say like three things a day or every other day. Um, right. So and some things are simple. Like that you can have multiple feelings at once. I think that's one of the biggest things too. Like what you're saying, Mary, when you have 15 emotions and you're feeling negative and positive, then just recognizing that that's okay. That's all part of being human, right? Having those positive and negative, and you can have both and that's, and you don't have to kind of squash them down. You can just allow them to be part of your experience. And then that alone can help you move through them because you're, you're just recognizing that they're there instead of, um, instead of pushing them down, which then, like we said, like Mary was saying, you turn to other things to kind of handle where you squish them. So yeah. Or something like yeah. super intense, like your friend's mother's death, you know, it's something so intense. Like how can we support people like that, like our good friends like that in such a hard time when you can't physically be so close. Um, so that's what people have had to figure out too during, during COVID and, and still, still ongoing, um, sure. you know, how to support your friends. Like how do you, how do you find a community, a healthy community to surround you? Because that's a, another huge part of, of brain optimization. Is having healthy people around you, people with healthy habits. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A couple of weeks ago, I woke up in the morning and I just felt sad. And mm-hmm. it was quite interesting to experience it because what I know, typically how I would have shown up in the past is what I know is that I would have not liked the feeling and then go on, I need to fix it. I got to mm-hmm. fix it. Like I got to do something. And obviously there's a time and a place for that, right? If you've been in it for long enough, yeah, of mm-hmm. course you do something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I allow myself for that day to feel to feel sad. And it literally only lasted like a couple hours and then away we go. And I don't normally feel that, like mm-hmm. a heavy sadness. And, and so I then after journaled and to be honest, nothing came up. And I was just like, huh, interesting. Something on an unconscious level passed through. Mm-hmm. I allowed it to pass through. I didn't resist it because what you resist persists. Mm-hmm. didn't make it bad. It was just like, cool. That's just another part of my feeling mm-hmm. of me being a human being that gets to ex- experience the full, you know, expression right. of, of what it means to be a human. You know, my soul was right. just like, Hey, um, we're going here today. Okay. Yes. Right. Well, there has been a lot of sadness, you know, I'm sure nationally here and globally. And so I, I, it's, it's fine. It's normal. You know, it's, yeah. it's normal to feel. And I think that's like you said, like it, people don't talk about that a lot. So I, I honor you for saying that, Joel. That's yeah. like really amazing that you just said that because not a lot of people want to talk about it. So then when people do feel like that, they think it's something strange or something wrong. Home, you know, mm-hmm. it's just a, it's just Especially normal. now, especially now yeah. with social media, everyone's trying to put something on, right? Like it's right. like, I need to keep the mask. I need to look good. We need to use the filters. Right. We're going to look like we're killing it. Otherwise we're not going to get leads for our business. 
Mm-hmm. It, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that's not true. Right. Absolutely. Like you get to share the multi-dimensional you with your people. And if you really want to have a, a, a great connection with your tribe, then you owe it to them to do that. Yeah. And yeah, uh, so yeah I'm not big on suppression. I, I yeah. like to move through it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's just nice to model that because some people don't know what to do with it. That's, right. a, that's what it's COVID uncomfortable. Is. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uncomfortable. It, it's uncomfortable mm-hmm. and people don't like discomfort. And so they just want it to end. Like you said, they don't want to feel it. And so then that's when they either squish it or they do something to try to distract themselves and they don't, they, and really what, if you just pause for a second, let it move through, then you're actually clear of it. And so you're not kind of finding this popping back up in other situations. And so I think that's, what's so yeah. huge to note too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of undertones within media and, uh, you know, especially mainstream media as well. And I think that we, there's a lot that we, we're not aware of that we're actually downloading bit by bit into our unconscious that's affecting us. What do you both do uh, in your daily practices that keeps you in a place of setting yourself up to win? instead of kind of waiting till your back's against the wall to then go, okay, cool. Now I'll pull the tools out. Are there any yeah. rituals, habits, anything that you, you implement? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Al. Yeah. We're both major habit people. So we're both morning people too. I mean, for me, it's like that early morning hours of waking up and meditating immediately when I wake up. And then even just like a five, 10, 15 minute meditation doesn't have to be long, but just kind of setting my brain straight in the morning and then going right into journaling. I'm a big journaler. And so just kind of clearing out, sometimes it's clearing out things I want to let go of sometimes, um, often and always it's setting some intention for the day of just like what, not necessarily what I want to get done, how I want to feel and what I want to access, like what I want to feel more of, and then anything else that kind of goes along with that. And so I'm really starting the day on my terms. I have three little kids. And so I feel like that's critical to, to really being able to handle whatever comes along because by the time I'm in the mode of taking care of everyone else and then going on to work and focusing on clients, then I feel like I'm, you know, taken care of from a um, grounding standpoint. And so the best way I think is the early morning because it's the, it's the time that you have the least amount of opportunity for distraction. But that being said, I think, you know, if you're not a morning person, then it, that's not the right time for you. I have a lot of people that do like that nighttime. And so it, it, the most important thing is finding that ground, grounding time whenever you'll actually get it in. But if you have an opportunity and you are a morning person, then as far as I'm concerned, it starts with like the mind piece and then right into the movement, actually, like to get all that done before everyone wakes up. Because then, um, then I can handle whatever, right? It's all, it's all out there. So. Yeah, and I, th- yeah, just, I think just, just yeah. don't open, just don't open Clubhouse early first yeah, thing in the exactly, morning. Exactly, right? Clubhouse. Oh my gosh, that thing is addictive. It's ridiculous yeah. how addictive yeah. it is. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they all are. Yeah, I and I think since late last year, I started putting it in my uh, weekly planner, like when I'm going to meditate, when because I try to hit it at least two or three times a week and then journal a couple times a week and when I'm going to lift weights and when I'm going to run. So I just, I put it in my, on my weekly planner. So then I, cause I know like when I have meetings and what my week is going to look like. So then I get it in there um, on, on the weekend, just plan for it. So then, right. yeah, I just get it in. And I, it's funny cause sometimes when I do it, it's like, it's not dramatic, but if I miss it, it's dramatic. Mm-hmm. Like you yeah. said, then your ba- your back's against the wall. Like oh, what happened? What changed? Right. You know? For sure. I didn't do for those sure. things. Yeah. Do you, do you focus on taking any particular supplements or anything like that to just get your brain into an optimal state? Yeah. You know, the brain is interesting because it's, there's so many billions of neurons that's really metabolically needy. Like it needs a lot of good nutrition. Um, but, you know, personally, if I, I eat like a whole, a whole food diet, so I'm, I'm good with my diet. I don't really need anything extra. Um, we're in Cleveland, Ohio, so we need some vitamin D because we don't have a lot of sun. <laughs> <laughs> now we don't have it now you guys probably have it now don't you joel send some um yeah, yeah. it's pretty sunny it's, it's like fluctuating here in bali it's monsoon season oh, yeah, uh, so now. my yeah. scooter that i ride can almost turn into a jet ski within the space of you know sunshine <laughs> sunshine to rain in two minutes it's, it's kind of intense here but that's nice. it's all good that's beautiful sounds great 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, nothing particularly for me. I mean, the thing about the brain is it as it is made, the nerves are lined by a fat substance called myelin. So you actually need good, healthy fats in your diet too for that. Um, so yeah, you need, it's very metabolically demanding. So if you're having like a slow day or you can't figure out why you're not getting these projects done, you want just, just watch your nutrition because it, um, it needs to be supportive. Yeah. So, and we so you're saying like avocados and nuts? Yeah. Like healthy oils. Nature? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, yeah right. and oily fish like you know the salmons and things. Yeah. What fish you do you have there it. in Bali? You probably have some good fish in Bali, huh? We got some good fish. I, I I think the most common fish here is like mahi mahi. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the stuff they have is is very much imported. My favorite fish is barramundi. It's from Australia. Have you ever oh, had yeah, barramundi yeah. fish? I we've we've yeah I've heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of it too. We don't yeah. have it very available. Yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that maybe nice. in California it's a premium something. it's definitely yeah. a premium which is good but you're right you know I, I actually noticed a difference even with my dogs you know we've got dogs here in Bali and giving them fish oils and like coconut oil and just noticing their behaviors are different their mm-hmm. coats shinier and they're healthier but they're also mm-hmm. like just a bit more grounded mm-hmm. yes. yeah their nerves amazing. are probably better working better mm-hmm. yeah it's That's important it. stuff but no particular supplement, um, you know, that we know of that really helps your brain long-term. Just good diet, you know, all these things. I mean, yeah, I that's, a, the, that's a common question I feel like that we talk about and really like you want, like we want there to be that one answer that's like, yeah, just take this and this is going to really help optimize your brain. And so, um, and so it's interesting because all the things, of course, if you're low in certain things that then that's something different, right? That you do need to look at with your own physician. But, um, but when it comes to that, like magic supplement, I feel like that's a common question, right, Mary, that like people mm-hmm. are looking for, like, just tell me the thing. Like I'll take it, you know? Yeah. We gave a talk to 400 doctors. They were like, what's the supplement? I just want the supplement. Like you guys are doctors, you know, <laughs> you know how the brain works. I just want the supplement. Like, no, you, yeah, you right. have to do these other things. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of boil it down to connection, lifestyle, and emotional processing. So if you're active in those three areas, it's, it could really, you know, optimize the brain in a nice way. Yeah. So that's that's exactly. where you need to be active, not like in the, you know, in the aisles with the supplements probably. Right. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Uh, I was hanging out with Dr. John Martini a little while back. He's a great mentor of mine. We've had many amazing conversations. And one of the standout conversations was that he said that when you look at nature, like anything that no longer is functioning within its own purpose actually dies, it collapses on itself. And he says it's very similar to what happens within ourselves. Our cells kind of atrophy, right? Like we, it kind of like destroys itself mm-hmm. because it feels like there's no purpose or so, no use. Sometimes what can happen is you have like this old couple that have been together for so long and they have this to a degree without whether they know it or not, this kind of codependence of like living for each other that when one dies and the other could not always, Mm -hmm. but could uh, pass away briefly after, you know, like shortly Mm -hmm. after. Uh, And, and so I look at that and I think so often that like as much as you want to put all the stuff in our body and we want to look for the hacks and everything else, mm-hmm. yes, they're going to make like the little percents of difference. Uh, but ultimately this constant story that we keep telling ourselves about, like what, what is the meaning of our life and like, who am I? And, and where am I going with this is, is like one of the biggest key players. That's what I found even within myself mm-hmm. is I know that if something's not meaningful enough to me, I won't get up to do it. But if I can create meaning around it, you can't stop me. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like that gives you something to live for and you, mm-hmm. you shift your frequency and your body almost has this like new energetic charge, mm-hmm. which like it thrives off that. Have you noticed this too in your studies? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's value-based. So if you, they call it value-based thinking, you know? So yeah, if you approach something like, yeah, you have to clean the house because it's dirty, like no thanks, you know, but you clean the house because it's going to keep your family safe. It's going to be, you know, a loving and more safe place. Everyone's going to be happier because it's going to be clean. Okay. You know, so it, or work, like if you approach your job, like I just have to get rid of this pile of papers, but I'm going to do this instead, but you put a value on it. Like I'm going to do this because it's going to serve the patient's that I'm going to serve, you know, it's like, yeah, I'll get that done. Yeah. So value-based, like if you put a value on it, your brain, like, oh yeah, I can follow, I can go with that, <laughs> you know, the follow of value. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what we really try to match too, because like, 
I think you can disconnect your brain to like your sole purpose and your gifts, but really like your brain is that connection to making that happen in the world. And so when you're finding your sole purpose and you're really on your path to doing what you're meant to do, then we, we want to bring it back to like your brain being the organ that like helps to make that happen in the day-to-day life. Because I know that sometimes we're, you know, we put the soul work and the energy over here. And we put like the science and the brain health over here and really like uh, bringing those worlds together and just recognizing that like, this is the organ that helps you to live out all of those dreams and all of your purposes and all of your goals. And that's, what's so hugely important too. So you have to actually take care of the organ so that it can allow you to share your gifts with the world. And so one of the first things we love to do in our workshops is just ask people to like, take a second and like, really think about what are your gifts? What do you bring to the world? And what, you know, what do people compliment you on? What are you here to do? And then recognize that like your brain is the organ that helps you to make this happen. So like we need to take care of it in all the ways. And I think it's um, such an important connection to make because sometimes we can kind of put things in different spaces and not bring it all together. Yeah. Everything's touching everything, right? Yeah, exactly. right. That's why yeah. this like harmonization is really important. I'm not a big believer right. in balance. I think balance is running around trying to spin plates, which yeah. is what so many entrepreneurs do. I love mm-hmm. harmony. Yes. Harmony, just like allowing for each thing to feed into each other and making your game plan make sense, right? Because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think it's like, it's either this or it's that. Right. And there's got to be this like crazy sacrifice. And you know, I, I actually, I coach a lot of uh, women, actually probably about 80% women. I think women are just more open to self-development and open to mm-hmm. admitting that there's things to work on. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. men have a lot of work to do. Uh, <laughs> but but I noticed that, uh, you know, some women as well, like I say to them when they're making excuses in certain areas of their life, uh, I ask them, you know, have you got kids? And, you know, often they, they do or if they're at that point in their life, uh, that stage in their life. And, and I say, how do you make that work? And they're like, oh, well, it's like really meaningful to me. And blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, interesting. So like, right. what if you crafted every other area of your life and found ways to make meaning? Not that you have to make it number one priority over your kids, but if we could find meaning in each category. And so we do that through the visioning process. And uh, it's incredible to see what people can achieve. We're literally only playing at like 20 or 30%. Right. And we're trying all these things with, through sacrifice and, and, and things that are out of our alignment to try and get what we think is going to give us 100% when we don't necessarily have to go that route anyway. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like you go through a point of burnout to finally realize, wait, I've been doing this, this whole thing wrong this whole mm-hmm. time. I yes. do love that. Harmony is a great way to say it because it's, yeah. it's different every day. Yeah. Your priority. That right. day. And you think you need to push, push, push. And really, sometimes you need to lean back and allow these pieces to kind of like come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the number one killer right now. It's not relationships, right? It's not money. (laughs) It's stress. Stress. Yeah. Well, that's what you talked about. Like the cells, like you, you, there's even like, you could see, like you say, like cell death, like the cells can't repair themselves as well. And stress Um, for the brain, it's not, you know, it's, it's the seed of emotions, right? And when we're stressed, it changes all the hormones, changes many, you know, organs of our body because stress will come down, you know, from the brain, all those stress chemicals will come out. Um, so that's what we, I, you know, I like how you said, you know, what do we do personally? Because there are things you just map out your week, like what can you do to be ahead of the game? Um, stress is normal. It's natural, just like feelings are normal. It's just that when it's, it takes over and you don't have any tools to deal with it, um, that then it's a problem, you know, if that's, right. if you're never in the positive emotion state, you're just always stressed. Um, but sometimes so, it does so take like, like, like backing up, you know, and just like assessing, like, where are you with that? Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that's distress? Cause I feel like there's a difference, right? Stress is like, it's kind of like self-esteem and then you have like self, uh, you have self-esteem then you have self-confidence and you have self-concept, the self-esteem kind of comes in and out moment to moment. I feel like sometimes stress can be a signal, but then distress is like this, like unnerving, like on edge all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why stress is normal, right? It's just the stress of, you know, you've been sitting too long. You have to get up and move, you know, it's like, it's just a feeling of you're right. Like a signal. I like that. You know, that's true. It's normal. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. People live in the distress or they think there should be something else. Um, they have a preconceived notion of what they're striving for, but they've never really taken a minute to kind of think that through. Um, yeah. And so I like the harmony. I think that's a beautiful way to think about it. Yeah. And a huge piece is like managing your stress on a day to day. It's kind of like some people are thinking, oh, I'll take a break from stress on vacation. And so part of our whole thing is like, what are you doing each day? Just like you're saying, those habits that like allow you to manage it today and then today and then today and then today. So when you go on vacation, you're not burnt out. You're not crashed down. You're not on the edge of like some type of distress or disease. You're able to actually enjoy yourself because you've set up your life to manage all that's happening. And so there's no, um, there's no just like, crashes the same when you're on that stress management thing, because really it, it affects every, like Mary said, I mean, it affects every part of your life from your relationships, your money, your job, your career, your business, your kids, your family, and your health, of course. So I think that's a, that's a huge thing. It's not one of those things you can wait on. And it's not one of those things that, um, that there's ever like the right time. It's like, you know, it's just like, when is the right time to do this now or yesterday would be the right time. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> to keep focusing yeah. on this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I learn so much from my students and my clients. You know, it's like I'm getting this full human experience of hearing their stories because I'm not always feeling what my clients are feeling, but I may have felt it before, or mm-hmm. it could be revealing to me an aspect of my life I haven't yet journeyed into. Uh, have you got any like case studies or any testimonials of some sort where you can share with, with us now of a student or a client that you worked with that just like, you're like, wow, what an amazing breakthrough. Any, any awesome breakthrough experiences you can share? Um, I can think of one that just went through our course and she, um, you know, right away in the first week, she was like, I love this. And we pace it out, like only give so much each week. So people have time to kind of sit with it for a bit. She's like, I want to do the whole thing today, you know? And, and so then, you know, she learned about the power of the people around her. So she had just left a relationship and was in a new one. And she's like, oh my gosh, he's so much healthier. She quit smoking. Like she, you know, she had realized like now that she looked back, the power of, of her connections around her that were determining her emotional and physical health. And then most recently she told me now she's working full time. She was only able to work part-time because of all her, like she said, her symptoms, like how she felt. Um, And then she just had these new tools that were, you know, she could put in her life within five weeks. And she was like, you know, I'm working full time now. I'm able to do that because of this, you know, just learning about this stuff. And she's like, I'm taking deeper breaths, slowing down, appreciating things around her. So yeah, that was, that was just wonderful to see, you know, and it's, it was five weeks. You know, right. so, so that's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. We have another, we have another one that's a, a woman physician. She's actually single and same thing going into that connection piece. And then since even working together, she has left her job, which she didn't even realize that she had the power to kind of do because she was so in it. And then she since moved cities, started over, started anew. And this is like throughout COVID. So I think so much of it is just when you when you get those tools, like, you know, and when you help access those things that are already within you, and then you're like, oh, wow, look, I can do, I can do all of these things that are on my list, or even the things that aren't on my list that I didn't even realize were possible or were kind of problematic. So it's taking that power back, like bit by bit. And then all of a sudden, your days become different, you start to feel different. And then you're able to make those like longer term shifts that feel really impossible at the beginning. But by just like those slight shifts, really everything can turn around. And so I think that's what we're, um, we're so focused on is like, what can you do that is really manageable in your life that can actually happen? Not like, okay, in this perfect world, you'll do this, this, and this. It's like, what can actually happen today? And then how can you continue to, to like build some momentum and some consistency? And then that's where the magic can take you so, so far forward. Mm-hmm. So powerful. I love this. It's, it's so good. I remember when I was studying a bit of philosophy back in the day, there's a philosopher, his name's John, uh, John Locke. And he says that our memories give us our identity. And I thought to myself, I'm like, wow. So if we were to achieve, let's say a five-year or a 10-year vision, it's like, hey, this is what I desire to create here. This would be the ultimate version of me five years or 10 years from now. But in order to be able to achieve that, 
my identity can't be the same as I am today to get to that space. Something has to shift. And so I was thinking like, wow, through your beliefs and through your habits combined, what I believe about myself to be true and the concept in the way that I see myself and how I continue to show up each day to build that belief and also show in reality that I'm, I'm worth it because I'm negotiating it, this then forms a new identity. And it sounds like what you have shared with your course and, and just like, you know, sharing what happened with your students or clients is they've almost like had this old identity and you've supported them through the stripping the old and sharing with them through challenging and getting them to connect the dots to realize like, wait a minute, this identity is actually attainable. I just need to do, you know, ABC and be consistent at that for once in my life. Absolutely. And now I'm able to open through that door and go into that new space. And I tell my students all the time, your dreams are closer than you think. They're way closer mm-hmm. than you think. Mm-hmm. When you start living with intention, it, it like speeds up and accelerates closer to you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because the brain can keep building and learning. And like you said, if you change your perspective and you start taking new actions, it's going to form new pathways and connect new areas. And it's, you know, it's just going to keep building on that. It's not going to stop. If you yeah. keep putting, you know, trying new things. So that's, it's got you like it, it'll keep, it'll keep changing as you change, you know, that's what it's, it's leading you and supporting you through change, which is really amazing to know. Yeah. So often yeah. we think of the brain as like, it's, it is, it keeps us stuck in old habits that we don't necessarily want because it does like to go down those same pathways. And then at the same time, it's really recognizing that like, it's actually this, there's so much possibility in it because it wants to form new habits and it wants those new identities that we want. We just have to get on board with it and, you know, treat it with the care and the love that it needs so that it can form the pathways that we want to align us to our vision, like you're saying, which I think is what becomes so powerful when you realize that it's all working for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it has this kind of ripple effect of inspiration, right? Because once Mm -hmm. you realize, wait a minute, I created that. That actually came into fruition. Huh. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll go a little bit bigger this time and, and mm-hmm. keep taking more and more steps. It's really mm-hmm. cool. I love seeing. It can be addicting, that's my, right? One of my most fulfilling <laughs> parts of coaching, which I'm sure you can really yeah. attest to as well, is the fact that just watching people realize what's been dormant in them for so long, but was always accessible. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Looking at the, yeah. You see that little light at first they're like, it's possible. And then you see them later and like, they've done it. Like, yeah, it's the best. Yeah. 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 And it's even just this concept of, you know, when you're sitting in a dark room, pitch black, if there's a crack just through a wall and there's some light coming in, all you need is a little bit of light. You know, Mm -hmm. just a little bit to now start to see more shape and form of things. And, And that's really what, the, the work is that we get to do is we get to be able to support them in that. And I love mm-hmm. what you both are doing that you bring in both your gifts and your talents together to bring an even stronger support, because I feel like a lot of people, you know, they can hear the content online. They can listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos, but if they're not held accountable, if they haven't been in the practice of it, there's almost like, no, this is kind of like, there's this, 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 uh, lack of, uh, feeling within themselves that there's some kind of hope so Mm -hmm. i love what you're up to it's amazing stuff uh before we wrap up the interview was there any like brain hacks or anything else that you feel is really important that we we can't wrap this podcast up with without mentioning it there's so many but i would just say you know take uh be intentional about the people that are close around you make sure they're doing amazing things and and living and have healthy habits because it is determining your health and your outcome Um, so that's a huge, easy one. You know, if you need to reassess because somebody moved or, or you're noticing things because you're in a new place, you know, you have to keep rebuilding your connections around you. Yeah. And I would say our, our framework, which is what we really like to teach around and we're from Cleveland. So it's the CLE, which is connection, lifestyle, and emotional processing. I think the one people are missing is the emotional processing and just allowing yourself those feelings. And really, if that's something that's not natural to you. I mean, I could talk all day about lifestyle, but I feel like there's a lot of literature and a lot of knowledge about that, but that emotional processing is so key in your brain health, your stress and your emotional health, as well as like allowing you to move forward. And so that's where we find people kind of, um, not sure what to do. So that would be 
my big one for the brain is just like, stop squishing those emotions in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just between the two of you here, uh, is there any exercise that you could leave us with that for anyone that's listening right now that may be going through a struggle of creating resilience within their mind, maybe they're stressing uh, on a consistent basis, or they feel like there's this fear of loss of control in place. Is there any exercise they can write down now if they pull the pad and a pen out mm-hmm. and apply it to their life today? Yeah, Ali, you want to walk them through? Just, yeah, I think one thing in each of the CLE. Yeah, so yeah. I would say exactly. So look over your life. If you have your pen and paper right now, get it out and write down on a scale of one through 10, how is the connection in your life? How are those people, like Mary has said, all through this, how are those people that are right in your immediate circle? How are they building you up? Or are they pulling you down when it comes to habits and when it comes to taking care of yourself and making sure that that inner circle that you have, hopefully you've given yourself an honest rating. And if it's not something that you're proud of, then that is something to definitely address. And then move right into lifestyle. Same thing. Think about just for a second, Think about how you're sleeping. Think about if you're drinking regularly or smoking. Think about how you're filling your body up from a nutrition standpoint. Are you exercising regularly? And that's a lot of things because that's a loaded spot. But give yourself, you know, a rating on one through 10. And if there's space for you to improve that, that is hugely important to your brain health. And it's hugely important to every aspect of your life. But just kind of recognize that. And then I would say same thing. Go right into emotional processing. And on a scale of one through 10, do you have tools are you meditating? Are you journaling? Are you allowing yourself to feel your feelings? And if you're not happy with your number one through 10, then you kind of know where you need to, to put your energy right now. And that's going to be hugely important. I think the biggest thing that we talk about is like, you can't just Mary always stresses and her research really shows that you can't just be active in one of these things. So if you're, you know, really healthy and fit, but you don't deal with the emotional piece, or you don't have that really close support system, then that's not enough for the brain to be really resilient. You actually need all of them. So then just give it a big glance and recognize like, all right, here we are. And there's room to grow and be more successful as I move through this. This is Joel, your podcast and all of your resources are so great for every one of these spheres. I mean, they can go back there and listen to so many of your guests and your interviews and just the things that you bring up. This is such a supportive community that it's really helping people to grow in brain optimization and resiliency all the time. So keep listening to Joel for sure. Thank you. Heavenly father. We were recording that because (laughs) you dropped dropped a lot of awesome steps. Uh, So just, if you're listening to this right now, you can rewind it and pause it if you need to. (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome stuff. So where can, uh, where can we find more of your, your material, your courses? Uh, how can we reach you online? Yeah, yeah brainopsgroup.com is a good place to start because then you can find everything from there. Brainopsgroup.com. Yep. And mm-hmm. Feel free to connect with us. Um, Mary and I are both on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, all those things. So yeah. um, we're on as our own self. And then Brain Ops Group is the company. Yes. Love it, love it, love it. Now, at the end of each interview, we have this last question. Okay, so maybe you, you pick and choose who wants to go first and who'll go second. <laughs> uh, but the question is, if you were to deliver your last 30-second speech to the world, what would that last 30 seconds sound like? Mm, go ahead, Mary. <laughs> okay. Okay, my last 30-second speech is, please get some brain wonder please wonder a little bit about how your brain works and what it can do for you. Cause it's right there sitting on your shoulder and it's got you. Mm, that's good. That was quick. I like it. Love it. Love it. Yes. So mine would be, you may need to unlearn some things that you've learned and picked up along the way that are going to help you to be more of yourself. And so while we do so much work trying to take on more and more and more, Just take a big, deep breath and recognize how amazing you already are and what do you need to unlearn and uncover to be more of yourself because that's the most important thing. 